happy to be back uh, for another sit down. We're going to tie a bucktail jig, uh, something for walleye, um, pike. Um, again, what we're going to start with um, material wise is uh, just using an uh, exacto knife, my barber scissors, my size A thread, and uh, in this case, it's uh, a pack bay size A and this is a uh, cherry red which I always like as a collar and uh, we're gonna tie a sandpike today so I have a natural tail so this tail I probably I might have even shot this deer a couple seasons ago um, just cleaned and washed it so we're gonna use the natural white and the natural brown color um, to produce um, a nice pattern called sandpike what we call sandpike and uh, today we're going to use a jig head that is a family special um, something that was designed by my father John T. Worth um, in the late 60's um, and as a toddler I remember him tying and selling these in the early 70's um, in uh, central New York from uh, Binghamton all the way up uh, to the St. Lawrence River actually so but this is a really popular head in uh, the Syracuse area Oneida Lake um, it's a uh, wedge design um, that is uh, popular with a lot of walleye heads has a mustad hook and uh, this is a half size um, just a quick little note on the Barumba heads is uh, we produce these in one quarter, one half, and five eighths, um, but we never use um, ounce after that description. Um, originally, these heads had a collar, um, which added to the weight. Um, you know, you find collars on a lot of uh, older jigs. Um, there's still guys that like using jigs with the collar and tying jigs with the collar, but uh, you know, Dad did away with that collar but, years ago. So um, half ounce size is what we're tying today. So I'm going to use my trusty Universal Two device I've been tying on since uh, well, at least the late '70s, somewhere around there. I've had this vice a long, long time. Um, the important thing. Um, about setting up a jig vise for jig tying um, is I like a vise that's going to be parallel to the tabletop um, for a few different reasons. One, um, when we add our jig, the jig itself is going to be parallel to the tabletop and that's going to um, have an effect on the thread um, how well it locks on, you know, the way you do your wraps and, and whatnot. So um, I've always been taught and I've always instructed others um, when possible. You can use any vise, but ideally a vise that is parallel to your tabletop. Your jig, once you place it in the jaws, is parallel to the tabletop. Um, the other um, benefit to this style vise is uh, tying multiple jigs you know when I sit down I'll tie you know a few dozen at a time I want each jig to be the same size the same you know the hair the same length so I'm able to you know measure for this half head this half sized head I will want my tail to extend roughly the length of the body you know so twice you know the, the overall uh, length of the hair will be an additional length of the body past the bend of the hook uh, and I can easily mark um, I have markings on the top of my vise just with marker um, and for this jig I'm gonna actually use the end of the silver part to figure out how long our tail is gonna be first we'll begin by locking on our thread I'm using a size A jig thread and I bring the wraps halfway down the shank of the hook 
and then back to the back to the head. We're going to begin with the darkest color first. So I'm going to flip my tail over and just take a pinch of that natural brown. And this tail has a little bit of undergrowth, those short hairs. So I'm going to I'm going to grab a good size pinch because after I snip this I'm going to grab the butt end and just pull out these little tiny these short hairs. There's a couple white hairs in here as well. Those can come out. And then I'm going to switch my grip and I'm going to stack this by hand, removing the longer hairs and just placing them back in my pinch. My table has a white card, a big white uh, card sheet taped to it, which helps reflect the light and I can I can look at my tail and, and see the white background and see this pretty well. Um, you can also hold your uh, hand behind it um, so your skin is a backdrop and I can see that those tips are nice and lined up. So you can pinch down nice and tight and I'm going to adjust my pinch just slightly just so that those hairs reach the end of that silver part of the vise and I'm going to keep my pinch tight very tight, tight I don't let up on this hand once I've trimmed the hairs right along my fingers with my barber scissors with the serrated tips and I'm going to place that right along the head of the jig. I can bring up my thread and lock that on with six or seven wraps. Um, no, I'm not going to move my hand. Um, in other videos, I've 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 released my uh, left hand just so people could see. But the the thread has actually created a V, a notch, um, as I lock that hair on. And uh, what that will allow is the thread alone, without the need of a collar underneath. Um, we'll lock that hair in. That won't pull out. That, that, that jig will last a lifetime. So my pinch is tight and I'm going to give this a twist. And now I can remove my hand. I gave that dark, uh, the uh, natural brown a twist. So now it is on the actual top of the hook. So once this jig is done, that, t that color will be what is the back of the jig. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, you know, this natural white is a little dirty looking. Um, you know, I did wash and, and dry this, this tail just to clean it with all the dirt and mud and everything else that's in a deer tail. But uh, the, the, it's not a dyed white. This is a natural white. So I'm going to take my pinch. And there might be a few brown hairs in here as well. That's okay as long as it's mostly white. And this pinch is a little bit more generous because this tail, look at all those, it's got a real thick, on the white side, has a real thick layer of short hairs. So I'm going to pull those short hairs out, drop them in my waist bag, and then I'm going to stack this just like I did the brown. I'm going to pull out those longer pieces and place them back in my pinch. And sometimes this pinch feels a little thick. I'm just removing just a couple of these longer hairs and some of them that are still a little short that I see peeking out. I'm just dropping them in my waist bag. Just to get that pinch so it is equal to my brown in in size. OK. 
Okay, once I'm happy with that, I'm going to measure again. So I'll place, pinch my, take my pinch and I'm going to place it up on the jig where it's going to lay. And I'm just going to look to where these tips, where they line up in relationship to my measurement on the vise and in relationship to those brown tips. Just to make sure that they're going to be, they're going to match up. That's good. So pinch tight, hit my measurement, and again keep this pinch nice and tight, tight. You know, if you sit and tie three or four dozen jigs, by the end of the evening, your fingers are a little sore if you're not used to it. So keep that pinch tight. And I'm going to lock it on just like I did with the uh, brown. So that was about eight wraps. And then I'm going to just finish the uh, head with a little bit lighter a little bit lighter tension. I'm going to bring the thread up to the head and then back down to my fingers and then I'm going to bring it about halfway up and now I'll take my I'll remove my my pinch and I'll take a look at it and that is a nice sized collar. Um, some guys like them a little bit longer um, as I learned, um, my father always instructed me um, a nice small collar. And if uh, your wraps were tight and uh, you used the technique um, that he always taught, um, that hair would not pull out. And uh, the nice collar, he always, uh, you know, advocated for um, that smaller proportion. And uh, I think Dad would be happy with that. And then I'll finish it up. So I'm going to take the wraps lightly back up to the head. And this one, just to shape the collar, just to look, give it a little cone shape, I'm going to take it back halfway and back up to the head with just a few wraps. And now, to finish it off, I will take a size A thread of a different color. And I have an old good rod spool. It's still a wooden spool. This is how old that spool of thread is and I take about 12 inches of that and snip a piece off and I form a loop and I take the loop and I place it underneath my thread from my bobbin and place it right on top of the jig head to form a loop so now I can go back in take a few wraps back to about the center of the collar and then back up to the head can hold my hold the thread as I uh, set my bobbin down and I keep tension between the jig head and this hand in my left hand so that collar stays nice and tight and I can snip the thread from my bobbin and I can take the tag end and place it up through my loop and now I can let go of my let go of the thread because I have it in my right hand and remaining keeping that tension between the head holding the thread and then I can take my loop and just pull it through it creates a nice pretty collar there's no knots there's no uh, you know you can shape it real nice and then I just try trim my tag in it's a good looking jig Show you. See, all the hairs are lined up nice, the brown and the white. Okay, so to finish this, to make it a sandpipe, because right now it's just a brown and white bucktail, I place it back in the uh, in the vise. And the nice thing about my universal is I can rotate the vise jaws, and I will grab from my jar just a typical sharpie marker this is what they call sharpie industrial um, just a standard sharpies are fine too you know they 
This one's so old it's kind of worn down, but this is just a regular Sharpie marker. Um, the fine, the fine point. So it's got a little bit of oh, there's a cone shape to the to the tip of the uh, Sharpie marker. And uh, the industrial super permanent ink um, on this one, I guess, is why I bought it. You know, thinking that it's going to be all that much better, but. Uh, in reality, you know, any Sharpie marker, any permanent marker, um, we're going to mark the hair, we're going to stripe the hair to, to finish off this sandpike, and, uh, you know, it's not going to wash off, so it'll, it'll, it'll look nice. So I'm going to pinch the fibers of my tail, of this bucktail, and just hold the hair together. And I'm going to add a stripe from the brown to the white. Stripe, 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 four stripes. And I'm going to turn it just so I can get a better angle at it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to hold the hair back gently and stripe it where the stripes will line up on each side. Right. And just to finish the collar off, I will use, I like my lacquer based Wapsi head cement. But uh, any type of head cement will work well. Um, I do not support the use of super glue as a head cement. Um, my opinion, super glue will actually um, it soaks into the fibers of the thread and uh, makes it brittle. In my opinion, um, so yeah, it holds really good, but. Uh, you get any pressure on that collar and it, it cracks. Um, so head cement that's uh, lacquer based um, I don't know spar varnish like the old timers use um, any of the water based head cements um, would work really well they're a little bit flexible so they're still going to saturate the threads um, they're still going to do what a head cement meant is supposed to do but um, in my opinion um, a much better choice than uh, super glue and there you have it that is one natural color natural uh, undyed tail natural brown natural white barumba head bucktail it's a good sandpike that's a good jig for walleye And there you have it, Oneida Lake Barumba Head Jig, um, designed by John T. Worth, also known as Jigger John, and uh, I think his handle was uh, Fish Hook. So enjoy, happy time. Mm -hmm.